You know, I've been told often that every day is a new day. Well, if that's the case, why do so many days feel exactly the same? I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Weekend in January. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been spending my free time doing due diligence. I don't know if it's a hobby or an addiction, to be honest. But in either case, you get to benefit from all of my hard efforts. I stumbled upon this company, and I want to share it with you. This is ticker CTXR, Sidious Pharmaceuticals. They are a biotech company, a pharmaceutical company, as the name suggests. Now, I normally don't look at these sort of companies for one primary reason. Most of them aren't making money. They're non-revenue companies and they're still a long ways from getting FDA approval. These FDA approvals from phase one to phase three, start to finish, can take anywhere from eight to 12 years. That's a long hold. That's why we don't talk about them often. But if I find one that's got something going on, I'm going to talk to you about it. And this company has got many drugs in the pipeline right now. And two of them are in phase three. And one of them, an anti-cancer drug for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, is just months away from approval. Folks, when I first started trading, I was looking for sectors that had constant runs and anti-cancer drugs were doing just that. I kept finding these companies that had huge runs and they weren't even FDA approvals. They were just progressing through the different phases. Now, these phase trials are important. You've got three phase trials and as I said, it can take 8 to 12 years to finish them. Phase one is for safety. This can take anywhere from one to two years. This is to see if it's just safe to take. Are there toxicity issues? Are there any serious side effects? If they get through phase one, which is real important, then they get to phase two. Efficacy. How well does your drug work? And this, this can take anywhere from two to three years, depending. Then they move into phase three. Phase three is superiority. How well does your drug work compared to other drugs on the market? This is where many fail. Now, the company is particularly looking for drugs that have no competitor. They're looking for cures where there are no medicines yet approved by the FDA. They are trying to find niche markets. So they've got lots of different drugs. The anti-cancer drug is right now ready to be approved. So CTXR finished the day on Friday with $1.12 with about 11% gains. Now let's take a look at what this company does. Citrus Pharmaceuticals was founded in 2007 and is based in Cranford, New Jersey. Sidious is a specialty pharmaceutical company dedicated to the development and commercialization of critical care products with a focus on anti-infections, cancer cure, and unique prescription products using innovative patented or proprietary formulations of previously approved active pharmaceutical ingredients. What this company is doing is they're finding smaller pharmaceutical companies that had drugs that were going through the phase one, phase two trials and got through phase two or up to phase two, but couldn't get past that point, got stuck. So this company buys those ready-made concoctions, those drugs, and then they improve them, they tweak them, and then get them back into the phase trials to continue. So these drugs that they're working with have already gone through phase one, they've been proven to be safe, now let's make it effective. By using previously approved drugs with substantial safety and efficacy data, we seek to reduce the risks associated with pharmaceutical product development and regulatory requirements. We focus on developing products that have intellectual property protection and competitive advantages to existing therapeutic approaches. Now, I found a great website that did a lot of due diligence that's going to be real informative for us. So let's jump on over there. Got to tell you how much I love finding a site that does their homework. I'm over here at stockresearchtoday.com, cancer breakthrough of the decade. They've done their homework. We've got some nice brief descriptions of the hot drugs that they have in the pipeline, including the one that is just about ready to be approved in a couple of months, and that's this one. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is one of the deadliest forms of cancer. Targeting your body's germ-fighting immune system, it invades your body's lymph nodes. Left unchecked, it can kill more than one in three of those diagnosed, with over a half a million new cases each year. But one company could be set to change all of that. Want to guess who that is? 
Flying well under the radar, Sidious Pharmaceuticals has quietly acquired the rights to the experimental compound E Quad 7, a direct improvement to a previously FDA approved medication that directly attacks infected cancer cells inside the human body. And this new cancer fighting remedy could be just mere months away from approval. If and when it hits the market, this new treatment could provide a whole new proven alternative to the harsh side effects of chemotherapy or aggressive radiation treatments. Directly targeting and attacking infected cells, Equad 7 could transform the $3.5 billion market for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma treatment. The anticipated PDUFA action date is July 28, 2023. That is the cutoff date, folks. That's the day we're looking for FDA approval. So if you were wondering when, there it is, July 28th of this year. The best part of this whole story, this is just one of several potentially game-changing new therapies in the company's pipeline. Looking at another drug that they've got here, Sidious Pharmaceuticals is a biopharma powerhouse hiding in plain sight. Sidious Pharmaceuticals is what's called a late stage biopharmaceutical company. And that's a huge difference. We talk about these companies when we look at a lot of stocks and you hear me say oftentimes this is a early stage biopharmaceutical company. The difference is early stage is cheap. It doesn't take a lot of money to get it through the first stage, but that is way back. First stage is still eight years, six years away from an FDA approval. A late stage biopharmaceutical company is working with drugs that are in the late stages of approval, much closer to making a run. They've gotten all the way from first base to third base and it looks like they could tag home base. That's what we're looking for. Uh, the company has a highly experienced management team which purchases rights to the most promising new therapies and then either brings them to the market or license rights to bigger pharmacy companies like Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson. A lot of these companies aren't set up for distribution. That's not what they do. They're set up for research and development to get these drugs through the phase trials. And once they succeed and have to go to market, they look for bigger companies who are all set up and sell them the rights to sell the drug on the market. And they normally get royalties forever and ever. Let someone else do all the work and we make some money. Now, it should go without saying that late stage development is the most difficult, most expensive part of the process for any new kind of treatment because even after years of investment, research, and development, some two out of five drugs still fail to secure final FDA approval. But with a dream team of top industry insiders, Sidious is turning the odds in their favor with two treatments now in phase three, both looking like they're going to pass. So taking a quick look at the pipeline, these are the drugs they have, uh, NCIMSC, Minolrap, Halolido, Minolock, and that E Quad 7. E Quad 7 is at the very end, right there, folks. She is about ready to be approved. Then we have Monolock, which is in phase three. She too is approaching, don't know the deadline on that one. And the others are in phase two and phase one trials. Now let's take a look at the second drug in phase three trial, which is getting close to being approved as well. This is Monolock. Monolock is an antibiotic designed to treat patients with catheter-related bloodstream infections. At present, these infections are treated by removing the catheter and then prescribing antibiotics. But this is a costly medical process with potential complications for the patients. In fact, studies show that removal and reinsertion of the CVCs have a 15 to 20 percent complication rate. That's one out of every five people having problems. In including misplacement, RBO puncture, and whatever the heck that is. Minolock allows doctors to treat the infection without needing to remove the catheter, avoiding both costs and complications. It's a simple prescription solution to solve another $3.5 billion problem. Currently in phase three pivotal trials, it could be approved in a matter of months. According to the CEO, 
data from the MinoLock Phase 3 program was reviewed by our Independent Data Monitoring Committee for Safety and Efficacy and found to be progressing as planned with no recommended changes to trial design. Folks, that's important right there. I was just reading about a company, uh, Clovis. CLVS, now going bankrupt, there's a Q at the end of the ticker, uh, they had a drug that was being used for ovarian cancer. And it was being used in a way that there was secondary uses for it. Well, the FDA came along after this drug's been being used for all this time, they said, you've got to change something. You can't have this indication as well. An indication is a symptom that your drug works on. Like say aspirin, it works on a headache, that's one indication. It works on joint pain, that's another indication. Well, they had two listed and the FDA said you can't have that second one listed. You're gonna have to stop selling it for that. And that took a lot of money away from them. And if you do that while you're going through phase trials, it means you're going back to the drawing board. You're having to tweak the drug again, pull it out of the phase trial and then get it back in. That's a lot of money. Money, a lot of time and a lot of frustration. Minolock is the first and only therapy under investigation to salvage infected CVCSs. In the phase 2B trial, the Minolock product demonstrated 100% efficacy. It worked perfectly in phase 2. Minolock had no significant adverse events compared to an 18% serious advert event rate when infected CVCs were removed and replaced. FDA fast track and QIDP designation and patent protection they have until 2024 and the formulation patent protection until November 2036. Now this FDA fast track that's important folks it's it is exactly what it sounds like the FDA moving the drug through the phase trials quicker when there's no drug out there to help this problem the FDA will help to get that drug out there fast even if it's not perfect they want something out there to help these people currently in phase three pivotal superiority trial it's at the end there's not a lot of drugs to compare it to right they have found niches where there's no competitors so this too could get approved very easily this next product helps with reconstructive surgery infections specifically mastectomies which is a 400 million dollar industry situs minor wrap could help reduce post-operative infections associated with surgical implants. It's a gel containing film and is primarily used to wrap tissue expander used in breast reconstructive surgeries. We believe that this serious condition impacts about 100,000 women in the U.S. and many more in the rest of the world. MinoWrap is a bioabsorbable, antimicrobial, semi-solid film that is wrapped around a tissue expander and placed inside the surgical pocket following a mastectomy to prevent post-surgical infections. Once it's implanted, MinoWrap slowly dissolves into situ for a specified period of time, providing an extended protection against infection. Again. This is potentially to be the first and only FDA approved product to prevent infections associated with post mastectomy breast implants, currently in preclinical development. Now this one kind of blew my mind, offering relief in an 80 million hemorrhoid market. Shockingly, there are no FDA approved prescription products for hemorrhoids, none at all. Now how long have we had hemorrhoids? ask Adam and Eve, ask Noah. I'm sure they've been around forever and we have nothing approved by the FDA. Yeah, that is shocking. However, that could soon change with Sidious's drug formulation. Hemorrhoids are an uncomfortable and often reoccurring condition, literally a pain in the butt. However, despite the numerous prescription and over-the-counter products commonly used to treat hemorrhoids, none of them possess the necessary phase one safety and efficacy data generated. So none of these have even gone through any of the trials. These are just products put out there to help us, but they haven't had any look-sees from the FDA. Sidious believes that its drug product could one day become that go-to treatment by physicians. 
Again, there are no FDA-approved prescription products on the market for hemorrhoids. Unbelievable. Cityus' drug formulation could become the first FDA-approved prescription product to treat hemorrhoids in the United States. And I guarantee you, if it's approved here, it will move around the world. There's no doubt about that. It is a common problem, is it not? Well, maybe you don't know. And I'm not telling you if I know. According to IMS, over 25 million units of topical combination prescription products have been sold in the U.S. for hemorrhoids. So yeah, there's a market for hemorrhoid products. We just need to get one approved by the FDA that actually does something. And the last drug in their pipeline, but definitely not the least, is a drug that could help with ARDS. Now, when I say ARDS, you might be thinking SARS, and they're closely related. They are both lung diseases based on pneumonia. We learned a lot about SARS coming through COVID. Well, SARS is the start of ARDS. You get SARS and it doesn't get better, you end up with ARDS. There are about 3 million cases of acute respiratory distress syndrome. ARDS globally, with approximately 200,000 instances just in the USA. The health crisis significantly added to the amount of ARDS cases. No duh. With death rates among patients on ventilators as high as 50%, we're talking half the people that get ARDS die. And these are the ones that make it to the ventilators. What about those that don't? So worldwide, you got 3 million cases. That is potentially 1.5 million deaths. And here in America, 100,000. Worse, at the moment, there are no approved treatments for ARDS. The company plans to submit an IND, a drug introduction to FDA, so they can initiate their phase one study. So that is on the back burner, but it is there. It is another one of their drugs. So to sum up what we've learned here, Monolock could potentially erase the need to operate on those suffering from catheter-related bloodstream infections, revolutionizing treatment of a $1.5 billion medical problem overnight. Equad 7 could offer a powerful new alternative to those suffering from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Combined with a full pipeline of other treatments, Sidious Pharmaceuticals could be sitting on top of a $5.5 billion revenue so there's a lot of potential sitting here and two of them are very close to coming out right now the anti-cancer drug and that monolock for the infections for mastectomies with over five years of cash runaway cash on hand left to complete the critical research and development along with the outrageous profit potential if even one of these treatments make it to market Sidious demands to be on your radar folks there is a lot of potential here if they actually get an FDA approval for an anti-cancer drug this thing could run for days literally go to the moon Let's go get some information now about a relative volume, share structure, and her financials. Hey, we're home. <laughs> we're back here at the otcmarkets.com website gathering up the rest of this information. We are over here looking at our relative volume now. On an average, over the last 30 days, she has been under the radar doing about 600,000 shares. And on Friday, not much more, 640,000 shares. But with that little bump, we did get 11% gains. Share structure for CTXR, it's not great, but it's not bad. We have 139 million in the float. We can live with that. Financials for the company, nada. They've got nothing coming in on the annual. They've got nothing coming in on the quarterly. Now, normally, this would be an issue, but I can assure you, nobody gives a care about revenues right now. Everybody's got their eyes on that FDA approval coming out, hopefully, July 28th. If it's approved, we know darn well that this company's going to start making money. So nobody's worried about the revenues right now. Disclosures for the company. Well, we do have an 8K uh, third week of December. And actually, this is just announcing that they had put out a news press. Looking at the news, 
This is the news that has been brought into the OTC. None of it's new. This is all back at 2017. Come on down here. They will bring news in from somewhere else online, but it's not all for this company. It'll be this company and other companies like them. And we can see that they are working with other drugs. Here at the beginning of December, it says that the company announced that the FDA accepted a biological license application of this drug here. They've got lots Lots of drugs they're working with. We only looked at a handful of them that are actually in the phase trials and predominantly two of them that are about to be approved. So they've had lots of information. As a matter of fact, right here, 1222, they came out with their full year 2022 financial results and provides business updates. You want to get some information about what they've been doing, where they're going. This is probably the best news press to read. They're going to have a lot of information in there. So let's go take a look at this chart and see what she is doing. I get the feeling she's catching attention right now. Anybody care to venture what trading platform we're using? That's right, Tommy, it is Thinkorswim. I got this free when I signed up for my free trading account with TD Ameritrade. So can you. Sign up, keep your account open, that's all you really got to do, and you can use this anytime you like, absolutely free. So we are looking at CTXR, Sidious Pharmaceuticals. This is a one-year, one-day chart. I like to see the 52 weeks high and the 52 week low. We had a high here of about $2 back in April and we hit a low January 3rd of 77 cents. That is a 52 week low and she is bouncing off of that right now. We have had some mild attempts to get over the 200 which she's been under all of this time but not with a lot of success. But right now bouncing off that 52 week low with this catalyst of an FDA approval for an anti cancer drug, we could see this thing run. Our technicals on the one year chart look really good. We see a lot of strength is now building up. We got an imminent crossover on the PPO, percentage price oscillator. The MACD, a lot like the PPO, you read them both the same. The PPO uses a percentage of the price. The MACD uses the whole price. We've already had our crossover on the MACD and got a lot of green bars accumulating right now. And our RSI has been climbing for a while from the basement all the way up to 63. Let's take a look at our six month, four hour chart. Ooh, a lot more volatility here, huh? So. She was going sideways here with some bounces for quite a few months. Finally got up over top of that 200, hit a high here in September of $1.38. And from that point, she's been rolling until she had this humongous fall. Goodness gracious. Midway through December, she fell all the way down to January 3rd, hitting that low bubble. And right now she is bouncing off in a very strong way. She is already above her 200 day SMA on the four hour chart. And we really don't see any volume here. There's no volume. Boy, when the volume comes into this, I think it is really going to run hard. Our technicals on the four hour chart look really good. We've got a crossover on our PPO, about ready to cross that signal line right now with a nice incline. Look at our MACD. That has been running for days. About 10 days, she's been pushing up consistently. Whoa! Our RSI is on fire. We are at just about 79.80 right now. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. Well, there you go. We do have a turnaround, folks. 20 days ago, we were at $1.16 and she started falling, hit that low bubble and has come right back around. We are at $1.12 right now with the high of $1.16 20 days ago. Crossed that 200 day SMA and has left it in the dust and is continuing on our way. Even after market hours, we still have all green bars. Volume, as I said, nothing really to talk about yet. Technicals, still strong. Still stronger in the one hour. We've got what here? Uh, five, seven days of climb on our PPO. Our MACD just had a crossover. It is starting to push up, though I do see a little bit of pullback here because of our green bars. Uh, and our RSI, is that actually in the red? It is. That is in the overbought, just barely, just over 70 right now. Five day, five minute. Well, there you go, folks. We have five days of running completely. She was down here at 88 cents, is now at uh, $1.12. She only fell from her high bubble of $1.13. She pulled back one cent. 
bounced off of that 50-day SMA, which you can see is pretty much what she has been riding up this hill. She has bounced off of it and probably going to continue. Now, I don't know if she's going to run. The charts look good. Technicals look like they're about ready to start moving again. Looks like the volume has been increasing little by little. It's worth keeping your eye on, folks. Wouldn't you say, forget the revenues. We're talking about these FDA approvals. This uh, minor lock for the mastectomy uh, infection rate. And then you've got the anti-cancer drug. And the anti-cancer drug is right around the corner. This is a grand slam if this gets approved, folks. I would put CTXR on my watch list and I'd put an asterisk next to it with the date. I don't think you can do that with your watch list here, but put it on a post-it and put it right on your screen so you don't forget. You don't want to miss this if it gets approved, folks. It will be a huge runner. So what do you think of CTXR? Think it's going to be a hot play? Come on. Of course it is. This is an anti-cancer drug. I honestly can't tell you how long I've been looking for one of these. I see a lot of anti-cancer drugs out there that are in phase trials, but none have been this close to being approved. So I'm a bit giddy. I am more than just excited. I hope you are too. Now, of course, it isn't going to hurt to do some more DD. I shared some information with you, but there's always more to consider. Remember, folks, the more you know, ha, 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 the more you can grow. See ya.